This is a graph of Google search trends in Australia. The term paleo in red, keto in blue. Up until 2017, there was very little interest in keto. Paleo was the rage. But as we track forward, keto then becomes a more popular search term, a trend that looks to continue. Originally used in the 1920s as a treatment for epilepsy, the keto diet has now gained popularity over the last decade for weight loss. The keto diet is a very low carb, high fat diet, along a similar vein to the Atkins diet of the 1970s. Keto requires a reduction in carbohydrates to between five to 10% of total energy intake. This is the equivalent of less than 50 grams per day, typically reduced to about 20 to 30 grams, and represents the carbohydrates in one bread roll or half a cup of pasta or a banana per day. In a standard diet, the body uses glucose from the breakdown of carbohydrate-rich foods as the primary energy source. A keto diet forces the body to use fat as the main fuel source instead, as the diet severely restricts carbohydrate intake. This is termed ketosis and mimics a fasting state. It's a normal reaction when food is limited and forces the body to rely on its own fat stores. By changing macronutrient ratios by reducing carbohydrate intake, the body switches to using ketones, a byproduct of the breakdown of fat as energy. I've heard people injecting olive oil into their mouths to increase fat intake. If we compare the keto diet to the Australian Dietary Guidelines, we can see a lot more fat and lower carbohydrate percentages on keto. In the long term, over one to five years, there is strong evidence that indicates no difference in weight loss doing keto compared to simply reducing energy consumption across the week. The keto diet is typically low in fiber and the concerns many health professionals have is that it cuts out significant food groups. The diet can cause constipation and dehydration or result in micronutrient deficiencies. People also often report bad breath and keto is typically very difficult to adhere to and lead a normal life. Not as low carb as keto, Paleo generally means 20 to 35% of energy is obtained from fat. It's based on the modern foods that mimic the foods eaten by our hunter-gatherer ancestors. The diet focuses on quality proteins such as meat, eggs and seafood, plus nuts, seeds, olive and coconut oil, and fresh fruits and vegetables, and eliminates grains, legumes, dairy, refined sugar and processed foods. Although paleo eliminates two food groups, dairy and grains, from the Australian Dietary Guidelines, it is generally consistent with the message of reducing sugar and processed foods. Overall, the principles allow for a diet that is nutritionally superior to keto. Intermittent fasting refers to the restriction of food for a given period, followed by a period of regulating. This is usually done on alternate days or with a time-restricted approach. Whole day fasting has gained popularity in recent years with the release of Dr. Michael Mosley's 5-2 diet and the Fast 800 book. The 5-2 diet advocates five days of normal eating and two non-consecutive days of reducing energy intake between 2000 and 2500 kilojoules. This is about a quarter of the average energy requirements for Australians of 8,700 kilojoules per day. Another approach to fasting is time-restricted feeding, for example, the 16-8 timeframe, which involves fasting for 16 hours, then eating within the remaining eight hours. 14-10 or 24 can also be followed. Does it work for weight loss? Logically, when you reduce calories, fat cells decrease in size and you lose weight. However, there has been found to be no difference in weight loss between intermittent fasting and continual calorie restriction. Also, it appears that continuous calorie restriction preserves lean muscle mass more than intermittent fasting. Overall, evidence suggests that intermittent fasting isn't harmful physically or mentally for most people. Very low energy diets have been used in clinical settings for over 40 years and are the most intensive form of dietary intervention for obesity. This diet severely restricts energy intake to less than 3,350 kilojoules per day, less than half the average Australian's energy requirements. Formulated meal replacement products like shakes, soups and bars replace all normal food. Very low energy diets often result in significant and rapid weight loss around 1.5 to 2.5 kilograms per week, but are often nutritionally inadequate, particularly regarding fiber and protein. This diet is usually recommended for periods of up to four months for obese people who need to lose more than 8% of their weight leading into surgery or for other significant health reasons. They're not recommended for moderate weight loss. A very low energy diet is essentially a low carbohydrate diet. 
high in protein, it results in the body using fat for energy instead of glucose. They are the most effective short-term dietary intervention for obese people. And even though many, like OptiSlim, are available over the counter at pharmacies, should always be undertaken under the supervision of a GP. In summary, restrictive diets generally work in the short term, but don't seem to be as successful for long-term weight loss.